what have you been in what ways do you feel like the defense has improved in the first team practices? Um, well, we, I mean, we've had a lot of snaps, and I like our intensity within the Bork week. You know, so I think intensity plus snaps equals experience is the way I'd say it. And so, you know, the, the thing that you do in the spring is you have a lot of different pieces working together. So um, there's not really consistency all the time um, with who's working with who, but you're trying to just work the pieces that you you see working together as much as possible. And we'll gain a lot of those consistent reps with certain pieces together in the summer. Um, but I've been, I've been um, really uplifted by the group and um, the effort they've given day in and day out. Please, with how new pieces have integrated in with the older guys? Yeah, I think our uh, returners deserve a lot of credit on that. You know, I think we have a very welcoming team um, that has a way of setting a standard but not creating outsiders when they come in. You know, I think we have a pretty good nucleus of, of guys that have been here have open arms the guys coming in whether they're one-year transfers or four-year high school guys or anywhere in between i think that's been part of the success is there a group or segment among them that you're like that's definitely a strength like those guys we got to have it we know that they're going to deliver yeah i mean i mean the the thing you really trust even though it's really year to year i mean we've seen improvement with, with guys um from year one to year two or three to four but i think what you really feel confident about is the guys that have played a lot of football, the, the Pat Paytons, the Josh Farmers, the DJ Lundy, Shaheen Brown, Zaria Thomas, Fentrell Cypress, Kevin Knowles, the guys that have played a good amount of football, you know what it's going to look like, plus the improvement of what this year is. And then we've got a lot of other pieces that have had intermittent, intermittent success or less experience than them. And our job is to try to get them integrated with that group. And um, that's what practice and meetings and all those things are for. What are your impressions of the, of the linebacker group as you guys close out spring? Yeah, I mean, collectively, you know, I think it's a mature group. Um, it's a group that understands what we're trying to get accomplished. Um, I do think starting at the top, DJ is definitely a year better. Um, I've seen slight improvement from one to two, a little bit more from two to three, a lot from three to four, and I, I just I see that growth. Um, I think Blake has taken significant steps. Um, you know, he's somebody that when the play's there to be made, I expect it to be made. I expect him to be in the right spot. Uh, and he's got legitimate sideline to sideline talent. Um, I do think getting Omar back the last week has helped. I've seen a couple plays that I think are glimpses of what I know it can be. Um, with him, we got to keep him on the field. He's got to stay healthy and um, be reliable enough that we can put him in a position to help us win games. I think Juice is definitely a year better. Um, last year, you know, he got a bunch of reps in practice, uh, limited reps in the game, but now he's playing in a way that he will make others better when he's around and when he's in there. Um, you know, Murph is catching up. He's shown glimpses. Um, some have been up, some have been down, uh, but he's shown enough physicality, enough movement skill, enough wanting to be better that you can see what that looks like. And, you know, the guys with a little amount of the experience that are here, you see their climb going a little bit faster um, just because there's l less history of what they know, you know, so they get better and maybe rapid movements. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. This will be a big spring for, for big spring showcase for, for Murph and, and the rest of the group. And then the guys working at Nickel this spring, just some impressions from that. Yeah, you know, in the years before, we've, we've used a lot of different guys there for different experiences. But because of our depth now, you know, in typical years, we would take AZ and Fentrell and get them involved there. But we've had so many mid-year enrollees and high school graduates that are here and so much retention within that room that we've been able to rep guys that I think will play there. So, you know, Kevin Knowles is, is back. Earl has gotten a ton of run there. Jabril's played a bunch there. And, um, and um, who else we, we put? Um, not Edwin. Edwin's played. You know, we play Edwin a lot at corner, but, you know, today we put him actually at dime. But, you know, Edwin and Jabril have really rotated at corner and nickel. Um, Earl has been exclusively at nickel, and then Kevin's been exclusively at nickel, you know. But in a, I mean, in a pinch, we could move one of the two veteran corners in there. I just don't really see that happening. I was saying, obviously, you got Shaheem as that consistent at the safety spot, but how is someone like Connor Hussey coming along in his consistency? Good. You know, I think he's, you know, a year better. And, uh, you know, he's got flashes. Um, I, I just, I celebrate when he's right. 
when the plays aren't coming his way. Because if he does those things, he's talented enough that when the plays come his way, if he's fitting in the right way in the pass of the run game or in the blitz game, he's probably got a chance to really make the play. So, you know, as a young guy, you just try to watch the ball and try and figure it out and go where it goes. And sometimes that works, but then sometimes there's big explosives and you realize your eyes weren't right or your position weren't right. That's part of playing as a freshman, you know, and, uh, you know, I think we're getting, we're moving the needle on that. I think he's the most improved guy, you know, and um, usually you look at that of guys that don't play are the most improved guys because they have the furthest to go, but it's a credit to him with what he's taken, the experiences that he's played with, and now elevated his game. I mean, he's on Coach Sertan right now. Like, he's trying to throw out this rep count for Saturday that's like he doesn't want to come out of the game yet, you know, and like, but that's why he's getting better, you know. You know, last year he had very limited offseason. This year you, he's been, you know, I don't want to say 100%, but he's been able to go every day. Squats, benches, tour duties, and I think you're seeing his body really gain confidence because of it. The four new defensive linemen that transfers in, how they all handled it, especially Marvin as someone has fights back a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, collectively they'll all play. Um, individually, they're at different spots. You know, Marv is really come on. I, I'm, I'm starting to really like what I see and expect playmaking out of him. Uh, Nusi had a really good second scrimmage, so that was really good to see. You know, there's some technique stuff he's got to come with, but he's got the right mindset. He's big, physical. Um, I really like Tamawa. I think he's got a chance to help us in a multitude of ways, but he doesn't stay blocked. You know, and that's something that showed up on, on his past college film. And then Grady is the one that has probably just steadily improved. He's gained about an inch of improvement every day within his footwork and with his handwork. And he's a strong, powerful player. You know, if you can put a highlight film of just some of the pod work, some of the pass rush stuff, some of the team, you got a really good highlight tape. You know, it's just about trying to make sure that we find the reasons why those successes are happening and keep down that road. But he's got all the want to in the world. Coach Norvell has talked about depth being better on this team than any group you guys have had. Do you feel that way on your side of all for sure? And where does that show up the most for you guys this year? Yes, and it shows up in depth. Is that what you meant? No, I meant like positionally. What position is it abundantly clear that like the depth is going to – you're basically going to have to figure out how – I mean, every year you say you have great depth, you end up just – biting and scratching by the end of the year. So, I mean, you need it all. You know, I'm, I always try to look at, you know, to make sure you, you probably need at least nine playable D linemen. You need at least four playable linebackers, and that's not counting special teams. You know, then at DB, you need at least eight, probably a ninth. You know, you're playing six and dime, you need a sub at safety, you need a sub at corner, you need an extra nickel that can play dime. So, I mean, that's a lot of players that you need to be able to trust because all those numbers are actively playing in the game. And the most important play is the next one. So, like, you know, we don't just keep 11 guys out there for 70 plays. That's not going to play well in November. Just back to Zari real quick. I mean, him performing at the level he has, does that do anything special for you guys? Does it you know, a nice luxury, or does it help you guys do anything much more effective? I mean, it helps us cover guys and tackle guys because he's a starting corner. He's really good. You know, and just you're seeing him – like his ability to blitz, tackle, replace on the run, or if whatever he was last year, it's doubled improvement. And um, I mean, he played close to 400 snaps for us last year. So, um, but that's what happens. Your good players get better. Your players that were maybe just didn't have the experience, they improve too. And that's how you build the depth. You build the depth by recruiting the right guys, even if they don't play right away, just continue to pounding in the, the structure, the development of them all. and. At one point, they're going to be able to play, and that's how you develop depth, you know. And I mean, there's only so many scholarships you have. When you make mistakes and you look at scholarships that can't help you in play, that's when you have depth problems, you know. Because you know, hopefully, you can go and find Donnie and AJ Cottrell and the, you know, the, some of the key walk-ons that we've taken that have had legitimate roles. But within your 85 scholarships, you better make sure you're hitting on every one of them, and they get better daily. Everybody wants to do that. That's what I mean. Want to brag on yourself how you guys are able to make it happen? Every we haven't done it yet. It's 2024. We're 0 0. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Good job.